But first, one of the reasons why poor polls don't mean the end for Labor's voice is the heavy moral pressure being brought by people with authority to tell you to vote yes. Now, the pitch is basically that if you're a decent person, you'll vote yes. Mostly unspoken, except when Marsha Langton lets a cat out of the bag, is the accusation that no voters aren't decent by implication. They're somehow closet racists, even though they are voting for constitutional equality by rejecting the voice. Take this video message sent out a few days ago that's just found its way to me from the CEO of Deloitte's, the big accounting firm, one of the top four, that makes hundreds of millions of dollars from consulting to government. Here's the Australian CEO, Adam Parrick, giving his 12,000 staff a rev up to vote yes, emphasising the good Aussie message by wearing a wallaby jersey. I'm voting for yes, he says, for two reasons. First, because Aboriginal people are not recognised in the Constitution, even though the voice is so much more than a simple acknowledgement that Aboriginal people were here first, an acknowledgement, of course, that if it was all this referendum was about, would have had overwhelming support. But I'll be voting yes on October the 14th because of two things I am not proud of as an Australian. And the first is the fact that our First Nations people, the oldest continuous culture on earth, people that cared for, lived on, spiritually connected to our lands for over 2,000 generations before the arrival of European settlers, they're not recognised in our national constitution. And that is a massive gap, a hole in Australia's history that we need to address if we are truly to move forward as a nation. Now, the second reason, says his boss of Deloitte, is because despite spending literally billions of dollars, he says, we haven't moved the dial on key indicators like health and employment. Even though there's no reason the voice will do anything practical other than double down on separatism and grievance. We need to accept that what we're doing today is not working. We need to change and challenge the status quo. And in that environment, providing a First Nations voice in our constitution to provide advice and guidance on matters that directly affect them is a logical way to change things up and deliver better outcomes for First Nations communities. Now, I don't know whether Deloitte staff are going to be influenced to vote yes by their boss or put off by the fact that for a company that's supposed to give professional advice built off fact, their CEO is pro-voice because of just the vibe. I will be voting yes on October the 14th because fundamentally it is the right thing to do and the right thing to do if we are truly to move forward as a proud, authentic and united nation. I've got to wonder too, I mean, how much of this is posturing uh, to win over the favour of the government, given those hundreds of millions of dollars of contracts. But it's interesting, nearly 11,500 of Deloitte's 12,000 odd staff in Australia seem to have watched that video. And one thing's for sure, if they are going to vote no, well, they certainly won't feel comfortable saying that around the office, will they? And who's to know, maybe their work emails are monitored anyway. So the boss knows who and hasn't watched this video. And that's the problem when people in power, whether it's your boss or, or your bishop or your footy club president, get into the business of political preaching. It puts undue pressure on people. It's, it's almost a form of intimidation. Now, I'm sure Adam Parrick would regard it as an impertinence for a boss to tell people how to vote in a general election. So why is it OK for him to do it in a referendum? Now, let's hope Australians have the courage not to take this moralising to heart and to think for themselves about the big choice they will have to make in just under two weeks' time. The Yes camp, well, they're not opposed to doing whatever it takes to try and win. Have a look at this ad in newspapers today. Now, what we do know is that the closer we get to October 14, the more desperate and desperate the Yes camp will become.